Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about playing off to the side. Now this video does not apply to everybody because not everybody plays off to the side. But I think it's very important for me to talk about this because usually when people discuss this topic, it's in the context of should you play off to the side or should you not play off to the side. Most traditional trumpet teachers believe that you should not play off to the side. And that's where the argument usually ends is, and, and the argument ends with no progress on either side. The people who believe that it's okay to play off to the side haven't changed their mind, and the people who believe that it's not okay, they haven't changed their mind either. Okay. But what I'm here to do is, is give you a little bit more insight and also some information about how you can deal with playing to the side. Personally, I play to the side because of my teeth structure. I'm not going to show them to you. <laughs> but I have three sharp points in my teeth that I have to get the mouthpiece around. If I don't get the mouthpiece around those three sharp points, I will bleed on a tough gig. All right? I know this from experience. Um, that is, by the way, why I play on such huge mouthpieces. I would rather not play on big mouthpieces, but I've got three of these things and it has to go around all three. And it's also why I don't play traditional brands like Bach, because the Bach mouthpieces don't get to the sizes that we can get from some of the more custom mouthpiece makers. All right, so that's the only reason why I ever left uh, the Bach mouthpieces. And so, now the, the question is, why do people think that everyone has to play in the middle? I think that's a preposterous idea. Not everybody has the same teeth shape. Not everybody has the same musculature. Um, there are a variety of reasons why people would play to the side. And if you're one of those people that has one of those reasons, the the conversation about should you or should you not is irrelevant, right? Okay, so what we're going to talk about is how to play off to the side. Now, the very, the first and most important thing that I teach about playing to the side is that the instrument should point in the direction that your embouchure is. So let me show you how far off to the side my embouchure is, my mouthpiece placement. The inner rim of the mouthpiece fits dead center in my lip. That's how far off mine is. I'm all the way over here. If I measure it with fingers, I can stretch, I can put two fingers from the corner of my lip to the edge of the mouthpiece on this side. On this side, barely one finger, less than one finger on this side. That's how far off I am. Okay? Um, uh, I guess you could say 15 degrees off in that direction. I'm guessing. Um, that's what it feels like. So, when you're playing to the side, you have to move the instrument to the side. Otherwise, so what we don't want in trumpet playing, and this is for everybody, we don't want unequal pressure on different sides of the mouthpiece. We want equal pressure across. That's going to give you a better sound, going to give you better control, better flexibility, better endurance, okay? We want equal pressure on all sides of the mouthpiece. But if you're playing to the side and trying to hold the horn straight, then you're putting all that pressure here and almost no pressure over here. And you can't play like that. You're gonna, the biggest thing that happens when you have that is you're going to start cracking notes. You're going to crack notes all over the place. All right? So what you want to do is angle the instrument in the same angle that the embouchure is, that the mouthpiece placement is. That way you have equal pressure on this side and this side. Okay? Um, now, I discovered a way to find that exact angle by accident. Um, I was doing the Clark, Herbert L. Clark setting up drills. Now this was 10 years after I had written my first book. By that time I had written maybe um, five or six different books. 
and I had my own routine that I was doing, but I was also at the same time, I was doing other more popular routines because I wanted to have that familiarity with all the different ways to practice, not for my sake, but for the sake of my students. I don't just teach my way, okay? I have learned as many different ways to practice as possible so that when a student comes in here, I can give them what I think is the best solution for their problems. My solution isn't always the right solution. It's often the correct solution. I know that sounds kind of arrogant, but I wouldn't have written the books if I didn't think they worked. So, um, yeah, you can call it arrogant if you want, but I have um, a lot of um, confidence in the materials that I've written. But that said, I, I have over this time uh, experimented and so like for two months I was doing the Herbert L. Clark setting up drills. I wasn't doing my routine at that time. I was only doing the Herbert L. Clark. But what it requires in the setting up drills is that you play everything pianissimo. And I discovered that when you play pianissimo, the notes will not come out if the angle of the mouthpiece is not correct. If you have too much pressure on this side and not enough pressure on that side, or vice versa, then the notes do not come out. They, ju they just stop. Nothing comes out of the horn. And this, wow, that was like a revelation to me, you know? Because, you know, if you think about it, if you're playing off to the side, you have to wonder, how do you know precisely how far off to the side you need to point the bell? When you play at normal volumes or louder volumes, I think what happens is that the, the air pushes the lip into the mouthpiece, so there's that, that um, connection, there's that seal on the mouthpiece. But at the softer volumes, that's not happening. And it really forces you to make sure that the instrument is pointing in the direction that's going to create pre equal pressure on both sides. That's all I really have to say about the the mechanics of playing off to the side. Um, there are, are people that need to. There's there's no way to get around that. And, I, and I'm going to say it again. The discussion about whether you should or shouldn't play off to the side, I think is a stupid debate. There's, there's enough people out there that must play off to the side. That Actually, I would go as far as to say that that kind of de debate Someone who thinks that everyone must put it down the center, that's actually harmful to those students who don't fit that mold. Students who didn't get braces. Students who um, have a different jaw structure or different musculature. Different people have different um, physical settings in their mouth. And you just cannot justify a one-size-fits-all. That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, now, for you students who have band directors that um, want you to play, or, or trumpet teachers for that matter, they want you to play exactly dead center, I'm going to invite you to sh have, share this video with them so they understand exactly why some students have to play off to the side. You know, this, this is an issue in my career because let's say I'm playing in a brass quintet. If I'm on the um, right side of the brass quintet, stage left, okay, if I'm on that side of the brass quintet, I'm pointing in towards the trombone or French horn. Either that or I'm going to shift all the way in my chair so that I'm playing like this and reading over my shoulder this way to the music. If I'm playing on the right side, I'm pointing more towards the audience. That's an issue. You know, um, when I'm on a regular gig and if I have a music stand and a microphone, I absolutely must be on, put my microphone on the left side of the music stand. So are there, there are issues that you have to take into account uh, when you play off to the side of, your, of the center. Okay, these are, now I've dealt with them my whole career, 
But if you're a younger student and you're having difficulty with this issue, it's good to know, first of all, that someone else who is a successful player is having the same issue as you are. Right? Um, so, yes, it's, there's no problem going to the sound guy and saying, I need my mic to the left. There's a, I only lost my gig one time. I, I think I, I actually think I lost a gig once because my microphone wasn't up high um, and it was uh, televised. I think they didn't want someone that didn't fit that trumpet playing mold. Okay, I think I actually did lose that gig for that reason. Um, but other than that, uh, there's, you know, I haven't had any issues with this you just have to be you have to speak up about it so that people know you have this issue and then most leaders will work with you on it okay most band directors um, okay I shouldn't say band directors. you know the school band directors I think sometimes they get tunnel vision they were taught a certain way and that's got to be that way and I have a real problem with that in most things now don't get me wrong I have a great deal of admiration for band directors um, and a great deal of respect actually and I actually when the students come in and they, they they have a conflict with the band director I actually tell them go to your band director do what they tell you to do and if you ever meet any of my students they'll they'll tell you that this is what I do if if you are in a band and the band director tells you to do something a certain way, I believe you should do it the way they do it. Now, here's the problem. So, for example, I had a student one time that was upstream, so extremely upstream that his horn was pointing up this high. He's a natural up upstream player. And the band, his junior high band director kept telling him to point it down. But then he would point his chin like that. So then the band director would get him, get angry at him and tell him to stick his chin up. He wanted to point the horn down. He had no knowledge of the whole upstream downstream phenomenon in trumpet. And he, he was the, what he was forcing the student to do was actually causing him to play badly. Because the angle of his horn just wasn't right on his lips. But that's another example of, of, of band directors make, trying to make students conform to the same mold, one student to the next. If it wasn't for me telling the student and his parents that it was natural for him to point his belt up that, like that, I think that student would have quit in junior high. Um, and he ended up going all the way through high school, um, played contests and won and picking hard music by the way so the student did a really wonderful job but the band director, band director was convinced that he was doing it wrong because he didn't fit that mold if you have a band director that is forcing you to play in the middle or a trumpet teacher that's forcing you to play in the middle please invite them to watch this video and if you have questions, or if your band director or your trumpet teacher has questions, ask below in the comments, and we'll, we'll carry on a discussion. I will not discuss whether you should or shouldn't, um, because that's, to me, I, I genuinely believe that that's a non-issue. Okay? But we will, um, we can discuss, if you want, how to make that work for your band, how to make you that work for your students. Uh, all right. So, if you like this video and this kind of information about the trumpet, learning how to play the trumpet, then click on subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more of these. And also, if you like the video, click like down below. Uh, all of that helps. All right. And you know what? If you know anybody that's struggling with this off to the side thing, please share the video with them too. I think this will help. Now, all right. Thank you very much. God bless you. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you.